I ate like 20 hits. I'm drowning myself. Oh my God. Am I going to be like this forever? I just wanted to, to stop. It was terrifying, but it was also exhilarating. Biggest adrenaline rush of my life. Before we dive into all of these amazing interviews, we want you guys to know that for the first time ever, I have hired an actual camera crew, which means we put thousands of dollars into it and we kind of want them to be monetized, just to be completely straight up with you, which doesn't seem to be happening because YouTube has gotten increasingly stricter with their guidelines. So to comply with some of the guidelines, at least best we can, we've had to cut a lot of people out of this video that were, I think, very interesting. So if you guys want to watch the full uncut versions of these videos, Videos, you must head on over to our Patreon page where you can pledge as little as $2 and beyond the value that you guys are going to get from doing so, it also helps me because like I said, we put a lot of money into this and there's a good chance we're not going to break even. So I would greatly appreciate any and all of your help by joining our Patreon family and huge shout out to everyone who already has joined. And before I talk forever, let's get into this actual video. Cheers. Hello. Hey. Hello. What are your names? My name is Keegan. Brandon. All right. What's up, man? Hi. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Tyler. Tyler? Nice yeah. to meet you, Tyler. Nice to meet you. Tell me your most terrifying drug experience. Well, we got chased, uh, me and uh, a couple friends, we got chased around town by uh, a meth head one time uh, who wanted to buy some weed. He was in his minivan, like, like tearing, through the, tearing through the village. I took two tabs of acid. And my buddy was on meth at the time. Meth? Yeah, and he oh, was no. trying to get me to explain the high, and I couldn't. And he made some joke that went over my head, so he grabbed me and shook me. And he said, why aren't you laughing? So was he fully clothed? He was wearing pants. They usually are wearing a shirt for some reason. Yeah, no shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, the best way to cheer myself up is to do four more tabs of acid. And after that, I kind of just spiraled. And then, yeah, it was just delusional state after that. So you had psychosis. Yeah, it was freaky, for sure. It was terrifying, but it was also exhilarating. It was the biggest adrenaline rush of my life. What is your name? It's Ollie. And my full name's Alia. So it's A-H-L-Y-A. That's different. Yeah. I don't think I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> so I have two big questions for you, Alia. Yeah. What is your most horrifying drug experience? And what made it so horrible? Oh my god. I ate like 20 hits of acid. That's, this is a good answer. 20 hits. Yes. Why did you eat that much? I was really young at the time. I was like maybe like 15. It was like one of my first acid experiences. So I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> Were you influenced by someone to eat this much or this was like of your own through it like cognition? I, I would say influenced yeah. for sure. So what happened? Yeah, I was tripping for like a few days at I least. Say, yeah. yeah, like I was gone. I was like otherworldly just like <laughs> that doesn't sound so bad. That sounds kind of good. The, the trip was just really like scary, like very scary visuals. It was a uh, very bad acid trip, and uh, I took two tabs of these Void Realm tabs that I got. Oh, you had Gamma Goblins. Yeah, and they were they were very, very potent. And uh, 200 micrograms is usually what I like to take, and that's what it was. And uh, the trip itself was going fine, up until I decided eight hours in, I'm gonna smoke some weed. I was alone, I was by myself, it's like 3 a.m. What like, was the worst thing that happened? It was, honestly, I was having almost like a schizophrenic experience where my voice in my head was just mocking me and saying these weird things, and it just wouldn't shut up. And like, even if I put music in, it got louder, and it would just, yeah, and it was really weird. So you were worried that you were gonna stay schizophrenic forever? Uh, yeah, it was kind of just very overwhelming. It was like, a, it was a lot. I was handling it, but it was a lot. So what's your name? Robin. And Sierra. I have some very heavy questions for you. So tell me, what is the most horrifying drug experience you've ever had? Oh my god, okay, that is heavy. This is like not that crazy, but I had taken acid and I just smoked weed a little too soon into the trip and I started looping while I was trying to wash my face. What was the loop? I thought I was drowning myself. And I kept splashing and then being like, I'm drowning myself, oh my god. And then Splash I would again? go back and I just kept doing it. Yep. That is heavy. That's yeah. terrifying. The loops are terrifying. Yeah, it was pretty alarming. Feels like it goes on for infinity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was An not infinity fun. face wash. An infinity face wash. I was very clean at the end of it though. Yeah, yeah. Eventually I kind of broke out of it and I just like look in the mirror and like took a deep breath and then like I, I'm clean now. Yes, yeah, so I was like, I'm very clean, everything's okay. And I went back to my room and just laid in bed and got super zen. Combo is tough. I yeah. actually had something similar on a joint and a very weak tab. Yeah. But the weed just propelled it into madness. I think I've taken like three tabs and I was fine, but, but not with, weed. with the weed it's like completely different. Did it have any long lasting negative effects? Yeah. Yeah, I went to therapy for a little bit. Really? Yeah, for sure. Just it's, because of this experience? Well, it's just really like, uh, psychologically battling 
inner stuff. So it brought it all to the surface. Totally. Yeah, I just did stuff or said stuff that I couldn't say properly, and all those ideas just in my head were negative. Yeah. So it took a while for me to kind of like integrated the experience yeah. in a way. That's neat. yeah. And since then I've yeah, dude. <laughs> but yeah, since then I've only done acid a few times and. Now I kind of stay away. You're afraid of acid? A little bit. What about yeah. other psychedelics? No, I love Stop. mushrooms. Yeah, I'm on mushrooms right now. One of the first times I did shrooms, I took more. I thought it was like less than a gram, but I took like a lot. You didn't weigh it? No, I just took it. Always weigh your drugs. I was like, why not? I just remember feeling like I thought I had schizophrenia. I kept, th I kept thinking because I did it with a couple of my friends. I had this urge like them. It's. Oh my god. I know, it, and then I also wanted to myself but it was like really bad and then like I'd close my eyes and I was like just going down this like black hole and it was like so like dark and stuff. Was it bleeding or were you like really obsessing over it? No I was like it was like stressing like during it like I couldn't move because I was like so but I was like if I could walk right now I would like go and like myself like kind of like. This was your first trip? My second one. Yeah. Way more intense than the first one. Yeah, I've never experienced anything like it. So, like visually what was going on? Everything was just like growing and then like I would like look over and then it was like melting. I would close my eyes and it was just, it wouldn't get better because I just wanted to, to stop. I know you close your eyes and it gets worse. Yeah. That's a horrifying feeling. You're like, there's no escape. Yeah, and it was like just the beginning of it too. And the whole time it was like, I was paranoid. I like, I would, I would lash out at my friends tripping too. It's like, I've never experienced anything like that. And I'm sure you've never experienced your internet provider spying on everything you do. Or actually you have. Unless of course you have a VPN to take your privacy back into your own hands, which is this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. And if you sign up today using the code PSYCHED, you're going to get an amazing 83% off, as well as a shocking three months free, which I believe unlocks the best price for VPN on the market. Besides allowing you to block your internet provider from seeing a lot of these taboo things you're doing, such as these videos could be taboo. If you're also researching other, I don't know, compounds, that's taboo. Your internet provider can see all of that. So using a VPN allows you to basically block what they see. It also allows you to use a video streaming service and change your country location to give you new videos to watch. So if you want to kill some time, Netflix and chilling, you can do that with brand new videos. And also what helps me is if you guys sign up for Surfshark, they are more likely to sponsor future videos, which of course helps the channel. So again, that's 83% off with the code psyched, three extra months, and let's get back to these Shambhala interviews. Cheers. Okay, come here, let me ask you guys some questions. You ready for this? Tell me your worst drug experience. Most terrifying, horrifying one. There's quite a few. I really like to dabble with psychedelics, but they don't really quite like me. <laughs> uh, usually it gets to, uh, am I gonna be like this forever? The first time I did magic mushrooms, I was at a friend's house and Every time the police sirens would ring, we would like wrap our arms and legs around right, each I've been other there. I know what you're and be about. an avocado. But we're like downtown Victoria, so they're going every couple minutes, but every time we'd like lock eyes and jump in each other's laps and become an avocado together, and she was the inside and I was the outside and just like protect each other. Well, I was convinced my friend was possessed by a demon one time um, on psychedelics, mushrooms. We were young and uh, it started off good and then we went to the public pool and um, I wouldn't recommend going out in public on like three grams. It was his first time, so. Why did you think he was a demon? Well, he was just kind of like staring off a little weird and the vibe, even he could tell that he was giving off a bit of an odd vibe and yeah, I don't think he was a demon now, but um, yeah, it was quite scary. I'm a huge fan of your videos. What's your name, man? I'm Gordon. Gordon? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Shamb I actually heard about Shambhala from your videos. Tell me your most terrifying drug experience. Uh, one, so one time, I, uh, I was testing my ketamine for fat, and it tested like there was no fat in it. But I didn't want to waste the ketamine, so I drank the like the solution after I tested it. Solution I, exactly. I was just water, water and ketamine. You're still able to drink it, right? Yeah, no, you are able to drink it. I tested more than I should have. Yeah, you're supposed to test a very little bit, and I tested a decent amount. So like after I drank it, I got like I was like look, couldn't stand up. I like FaceTime one of my friends. I was like, if if I like I don't answer the phone tomorrow, I died because of ketamine. I've like, been there. I've actually yeah, been like, there. No, like and like I, this was when I was pretty relatively unexperienced with ketamine, like only 10 times using it or something like that. So I was freaking out in my house, but I woke up the next day and was fine. I've gone so upside down and backwards, I've turned into a mahogany table and saw it in third person. 
I literally just saw myself in third person turn into a goddamn table. Everybody's grandma has one. What were you on? <laughs> it, was, it was a bit of a K-hole. <laughs> okay, it was a really bad K-hole at Base Canyon like two years ago. I was sitting in my van and like I, we were trying to watch Adventure Time on my phone and I was like watching it and I, out of nowhere I like, look up and I like close my eyes and I like everyone that was in the van with me, I could see their souls while my eyes were closed. But then I was like blasting off and I was just like, I swear to God, if I die and this is what it's like, I feel like I experienced death. And it was, was it scary when you were going through this? Um, I was crying because I was just like really confused what was going on. I've never k hold before like that. And then like I came back and everyone was like, why are you sobbing? I was like, where am I? <laughs> Is there any lessons learned from this? Don't take too much ketamine. Yeah, don't take don't take too much ketamine, man. No, they're always actually pretty good. I never go too far, honestly, and it's just about the experience. You just gotta crack the egg to make the omelet, you know? It was not the best experience, but again, it's all about learning, right? So it taught me to respect the drugs and you know, start low, take your doses, you can work your way up. Yeah. So it made you more cautious as a result? Yes, most definitely. And it, it did put a little bit of fear inside me as to like how powerful these substances I are. Know. People don't respect it, they get freaking put in their place. Yeah. It's crazy. I've yeah. been there. I've, I've been in full psychosis. Did you feel better? When I, I've had a similar one and the next day I felt so grateful for life. Yes, no, yeah, like, like I, and I honestly like felt like so ready to just get out like, like I wasn't tired or lethargic waking up. I was just like ready to get after the day and like get after it. I never felt more grateful to be alive the next day. And uh, I think, yeah, from then on, I just like try to not take any day for granted, man. So the negative turned into a positive. Yes, 100%. I, I find like every bad trip, there's a lesson in it, you know? I feel like the worst, the bigger the bad trip, like the worse it is, the bigger the lesson that you can learn. 100%. Nice. Did it scare yeah. you about ketamine? No, it's actually, it's actually like my de my drug of choice. Like, so just not too much? Yeah, no, yeah. I just, uh, I'm just comfortable with it now and know how to uh, dose myself. I did quit smoking that night though. I never really smoked a cigarette again after that. I decided they were disgusting during my mushroom trip. After like doing them, uh, you know, numerous amount of times, you kind of realize like, it's just about letting go and like, not setting an expectation on what to expect and being able to let go of your sense of reality. Because when you're in that state, your, your eyes are like open to a whole new like realm of perception. I feel like a lot of people have a hard time letting go of that known reality. I do sometimes. It's hard. I think we all do. You get comfortable in your life exactly. and you get scared you're not gonna come back. It's yeah, it's hard. Yeah. I agree. Now I do it with like an intention, you know, like it's not like back then it was very just like to get high, which is not what you wanna be doing. So now you're doing it for spiritual reasons? Yeah, definitely. And not taking like I'll literally take one hit of acid and like be good now. All right, let's follow that with like a, a lighter question. What is your best drug experience? I actually had like a pretty profound acid trip like pr like a few months ago actually. I was on like three and a half hits. It was like this concert and okay, it's kind of weird. The, the girl had cancer who was singing and she like asked the whole crowd to like collectively like come together and heal her and literally like I felt like everybody collectively like they put their hands out and it was just like waves of energy like going into her body and she like levitated. So you were on acid so you could she, feel the energy. Yeah That's she so levitated cool. and all of my friends like saw the exact same thing everyone it was like some very yeah like witchy stuff like levitated off of the stage. We gotta follow a negative with a positive. Okay. Best drug experience. Um, one of my favorite um, is one of my first times ever taking LSD. Uh, me and uh, one of my roommates now um, took LSD together. We both took a tab and a half. Um, and like we're going through the night, we're like on this rock looking at stars, like, and it's just such a memorable trip for me because we both just like look over at each other at once and we're like the scarab, and we both saw a scarab beetle in the sky and the stars. He saw it too. He yeah. did see it too, exactly. And like it's like, a like you're with the people you're supposed to be, and b you're just moving in the direction you're supposed to be, like. In so you life. took it as a synchronicity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love those. Of course, that's yeah. exactly what it means. You're like on the right path. Yeah. Even if shit is going bad, yeah. I like the synchronicities because yes. like it's bad, but it's good bad. Yes, I mean you like you can't get the good without the bad. If you don't get bad in life, that's like, why I'm asking what's duality questions. Yeah, here. what's what's life's about if you don't have bad? Like, yeah. We were at the Gorge Amphitheater, and we were coming up on acid, and it was really overcast. And right as I was peeking, the sun came out, and I don't know if you know the music from Euphoria, but the artist was playing this like 
just beautiful vocal song from Euphoria, which is like a very emotional show. And I just like started crying and I was just like very, <laughs> I was very affected by it. It was just like very beautiful and I felt very connected with everyone and it was just like pure magic, honestly. I still think about it. <laughs> did it have any lasting positive impacts on your life? Um, or did it just fade the next day? I felt, I mean, I felt really happy in the weeks that followed and like whenever that song comes on, I like get really emotional when I hear it's, it. I have drug songs too. Yeah, it's like I, li I, I listen so to this on now. one drug. I listen to the song, it's like I'm back on the drug a little bit. Yeah, no, definitely. Best, most enlightening, amazing drug experience. Honestly, it's the egg cracker for me. That was the situation. Like, I was always a shy person. I never could break down and let myself loose in the public. And then when I finally did Mushrooms for the first time, it was like truth serum for the soul. And it just let the embarrassment go. Really? Yeah, and so honestly- you had social anxiety. Yeah, and, and that was the experience it. that makes me still do it to this day. That Honestly, I have the best experience every time, as long as I don't do too much. <laughs> A few times after, I did shrooms like again with my other friend, and this time like we were just chilling, and then I my mind went like nothing, and then I had like I think a spiritual awakening, like I saw like mountains and like it was like the most beautiful thing, and then after that I kind of just changed my life because before that I was in school and I was like on like medications and stuff and like really like depressed and like not doing good, and then as soon as I did that like I stopped taking it the next day, everything changed in my life. Wow, it was, like that instant. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. I'd say Canada Day, when me and her met, actually. I made some psychedelic tea, and I blessed it with the Lord's Spirit. And uh, me and my friends, we all went to this rock quarry and just did some cliff jumping and just swam. Swimming on mushrooms is, like, it's the best, man. But, like, in fresh water. My absolute favorite was definitely, um, I had shrooms first. So those went, they were penis envy, so they were very strong. And it was like a, you know, full six. Two grams time. of that is like four of another one, at yeah. least. Yeah, and I took around two grams, and that was an amazing experience, though. It did teach me a lot. It was a very spiritual trip. Um, and then I'd say later on that day, we also took um, a little bit of acid and then a little bit of ketamine. And for some reason, that just all blended perfectly. And usually, I don't like mixing shrooms and acid together. But for some reason, this trip was just, it was everything I needed. Um, yeah, it, it, and it taught me a lot about myself, and it kind of healed me. So there was one time when it was, it was pouring rain and everything was wet and the molly had just kicked in and the wind blew and the rain hit the lights under this tarp and it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life and it was just like the rain's okay, we're all soaking wet and it's just everything's wet and beautiful and just the way the light... is the rain amazing though? Just yeah, it was amazing. It's so calming. Yeah, it's the rain, right? I love it. I was, it was absolutely euphoric. It's funny because hearing right. that, it's like, okay, so it rains. But yeah, it's your perception but it was like, of the event. It was the perception of the rain, exactly. And follow up a negative with a positive. Best experience and why? Probably my first festival, and it was my first time like candy flipping, I think, where it's like you do shrooms and acid and molly. Yeah. Well, that's different, what you just said. Candy flipping is just acid and molly. You did shrooms too? Yeah. I don't even know. I think that's called a Jedi flip. Whatever it was, it was my first time doing it. I was in the middle of the pit, like just wetting buckets. Got my first pass, Mina, and we're just going like, Woo! and like everyone was just like, you look like you're having the best time of your life. And ever since then, like I've been loving festivals. So. That's awesome. So it was good just because it was fun. It was, it was just fun. Everyone around me just like made me feel so safe, and I was so thankful for that. So. And it was nice chatting with you for the interview. Thanks for the interview. Dude, Come here. Up. Yeah. Like, this is like, I, did, I was thinking in my head, I was like, what if you'll be here? Right. Oh my gosh. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're fine. You're fine. I appreciate it. I appreciate you waiting.